My name is Brian Watkins and this is a short video tutorial on how to create a three-dimensional data table in Excel that is searchable by using uh, any one of three, um, three fields and narrowing in on uh, unique pieces of data. So what I've done is I've created a we're going to create just a regular table that will have rows and columns and I've named the rows with numbers and the columns with uh, with colors, but the trick to do the 3D search is to create identical tables on multiple worksheets. So we would go to, um, let's just copy our row names, and we go to each one of these tables and create an identical, uh, each one of these worksheets rather, and create an identical uh, table. So to group them all together so that we can work on them all at once, click on one, hold the shift button down, I'm holding shift down, and then click on the farthest uh, to the side and then everything in between becomes joined together. You can see at the top it's now a group. So I'm just going to start here, give yourself a little room, and I'm going to drop. Oh, I thought I had them. Okay, so I'll go back here, copy, and then I'm going to hold shift down, click in the middle, and then paste the values. There we go. So there are my row values, and let's uh, let's build a table that looks good. So we'll put that. Turn the top white. Bold. Okay. There are the rows that we're going to use. Now let's go and create an upper boundary, and we'll put when we click out we ungroup but this time we're going to put color names to serve as columns so again I click on the first hold shift down click on the far side here everything in the middle is now joined so I'm going to take um, and I'm going to paste but I'm going to transpose because it was a vertical and now I want it to be horizontal so I've got all of them Let's center them, center them in the cells. Uh, I'm going to now select all of them. So they're all selected. Double click. Okay, we've changed the, uh, the height. I don't want to do that. We'll just stick with this and give this one here a little more. So to make it consistent, We'll put some fill, change that, bold. Okay, now we have a table that's set. Uh, we could get rid of this one here. Uh, let's delete column. Can we see everything? No, we can't. There's one more, so we'll delete some space. Okay, now we can see our entire table. Now let's fill it with some data and uh, in order to do this what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by using the rand between function to return some number that's anywhere from one to a million. So essentially we get uh, you know totally random numbers. And then I'm going to add to the end of it an A because we're in the first table, the 2007 table. The only reason I'm doing this is so that later when we're doing our queries, our searches, we can know for sure that we landed in 2007 by noting that the data has an A on the end. Okay, there's my random number. I'm going to take it and fill the entire table with random numbers. At this point I'm going to ungroup and then I come back and I can change all of these by copying and then pasting back over the same range just the values. So now when I click out, what I'm looking at are just random numbers. And let's give them, um, I wonder if I, well with the A they won't format. So we could give them a format, but uh, we'll just just keep them raw numbers for now. All right, so 
each of the tables still has the formula and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each table change that to a B whoops change this to a B and copy it down and across like this and then copy and paste just values okay I'm going to do that for each one C D E F G H I'm going to pause and come back okay I've now finished going through each of these years 07 will be A B C D E F G H now we're doing this only so that we can make sure that we're getting accurate results uh, if you were doing this for a real world application it doesn't matter what's in the data our search query will tie all three search variables together and will pick out the one piece of data that is at the right coordinates this table looks for one uh, intersection at a time it looks for say a row and a column in a year so let's join them all again again the join is click on the one farthest to the left and then I can join by holding the shift down clicking on 214 so we're going to take out the the grid lines and briefly going to just I'll break it now going to 2007 the search function that we're going to use is the index function the index function requires you to uh, define a table and then give a column in a row uh, it's easier for our purposes than a VLOOKUP or an HLOOKUP because we can describe our data for the search as just the numbers. We don't have to define key variables. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to combine the index function with a match function. So at the first, the first part of using this function means that we have to go to formulas and for each one of our tables we're going to give them a name and the name is going to be keyed or contain the actual sheet name below so that what we can do is we can then use the indirect function to put together the address and then make our search functional so define name and this will be data set 2007 and down here you'll see that it uh, refers to the worksheet 2007 and the range of cells will be identical across all of the joined tables so I'm going to define the name here as data set 2008 and now I'll pause and I'll go through and do the rest okay now we can go to name manager we will see that 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 have all been defined they all have identical C3 to Q17 addresses. So at this point, uh, even though it uh, seems rather obvious, let's just put numbers here. If I wanted to say I'm going to do an index function and I'm just going to use data set 2007 because that's where I'm at, I need to feed it a row number. So let's give it row number 8 and a column number. Let's just say we'll go over six okay and that will return a number so if I go over one two three four five six and then I go down one two three four five six seven eight you can see that H10 contains the number that's identical to the search query which was look at data set 2007 return row 8 and item 6 well in order to make this uh, searchable over all the data what we're going to do is we're going to define our rows and our columns by name and we can do that from anywhere um, let's do it uh, we'll just do it from here okay and so we're going to define a name and this is going to be column and it will consist of a range from 1 to 15. Okay, so now if I do a match function, match, and my value is, say, yellow, 
put that in quotes here. And I want to look it up in columns. So I'll pull down my column there. And I want an exact match, zero. That should refer or return the number six. And it does, it returns the number six. What it's doing is it's taking this array from black to purple and finding for me a number which I will then feed into this function here. So that's enough about the functions. Now we know how they work. Uh, we need to define one more set. So we're going to define this as the rows. Actually, just row. I think we called the other one column. So now if we look at Name Manager, we've got a column, a row, and all of our data sets. We go to our query page, and uh, let's just figure out some data here. We're going to do a year, let's say year 2009. Let's say number 10. Let's say color uh, pink. All right, we want to know what piece of data corresponds to those three coordinates. To do so, I just go index, index, there we go. Now, my array is going to be built up using the table name. So what I do is I say indirect, and my indirect is going to be a text that's going to correspond to the name I gave that data set. So we know it's going to say data set, and there's going to be no space. And we're just going to concatenate or add to that using the, the and sign. And then we're just going to use whatever's in E3. And when I close that, what I've done is I've created a reference to data set 2009. Because I've put the text data set together with the number 2009. I've already named it as the, uh, the total of the data points that are on 2009. So that's my array. My row number is going to be a match function where I take my lookup value which is going to be F3 and I'm going to ask it to look in the row array and turn an exact match back. That'll give me a row. Now my column is the same function. I match the G3. I'm going to just type G3 because behind my uh, my editing. So I match the color in G3 to column and I want equal match. So there is my index with the data set for the year, the match for the for the row and the match for the column. So our result is 895772C. Well, a, B, C, 09, that's a good sign. So let's go to 09 and we'll look for 10 pink. So uh, one way to do that is we'll just hit equal sign and then we'll travel 09. It's, it's going to think we're looking for a cell. So we'll go to 10 pink, 10, and we'll just slide over here till we see pink. Oh, sorry, I missed it. 10 pink. And click on it, hit return. And there it is. We have a match. So our function works and we've created a three-dimensional uh, table. So, Okay, let's, uh, let's develop just some random data so that we can uh, demonstrate how good our, our function is working. So we'll just put an index search here. Um, I've named the, uh, the years. So we'll say years and instead of saying 1 through 6, we'll say a rand between, uh, let's see, rand between 1, comma 6. And that should just bring us, if I pull this down, random years. There we go. Perfectly random years. Let's center, make a match. We'll do the same for our, um, our number. So we have an index, and I believe we called this uh, row. So we'll take row, comma, rand between, and we'll select any one of 15 of those. One, comma, 
one five. Okay, I have center it and we'll drag this down. Boom. So there we have some random numbers. And we'll do the random colors next. Index. And this was column. And we're gonna do a rand between and it's also uh, 1 through 15. Okay, let's center that. And you'll see these are changing each time we calculate. Alright, so this should work for any combination of these three uh, search items. So there it goes. And it looks like we're fine. Let's look for an 07, which should be an A, good. Uh, or 2012, which is an F. There's your 3D table. So in the next year, past 2014, you could keep increasing it and uh, move forward. But uh, this is a nice, simple way to do three-dimensional searching.